Hello and welcome to the Car Kieran channel. So folks, a brief moment ago we reviewed the new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. After that review was over we put our wrenches back on and we started working. Toyota invited us to an event to really push the envelope with the Tacoma, take it off-roading and it just happened to be that there was some serious off-roading there, at least to me. Maybe it was not the most serious. However, we got a unique opportunity to speak with the assistant chief engineer of the Tacoma. We asked him some questions that some of them we discussed on the review of the Tacoma and very nice gentleman. We really got good info from him. Now, because of that invitation, we had to put our wrenches down, take a trip and we did some off-roading. So let us go through that footage. We'll talk about our experience with it off-roading and then we'll talk to the assistant chief engineer of the Tacoma with some important questions. So, of course, we drove the 600,000 mile Lexus LS430. Beautiful day, sunny, great gas mileage, very comfortable ride. We arrived in Wisconsin. The weather was just beautiful. I really loved the weather there. And then the next morning, this happened. Wisconsin happened. You just can't pick the weather and they were not expecting this and it just it just happened. So we had to drive in the snow, which was very scary, the 600,000 mile Lexus, rear wheel drive, heavy. It got a little salt on it. Welcome to Road America, because we were there actually to drive Tacomas off-road, which this was the perfect weather for that. So the first car we drove was TRD off-road. I really like this trim. It doesn't have that air dam at the bottom. It looks proper. And most important thing, it has the proper tires. Quick disclaimer, I am not into off-roading a lot. I'm usually the guy that fixes them when they break. Nothing broke this time. But what I loved about the Tacoma the most, going over this steep hill, which was initially was kind of scary. You, you couldn't see the edges from the snow. It has torque at low RPM. So when you're going up a steep hill like that, you don't have to really smash the throttle and start sliding. No, it has torque at lower RPM, so it just went up. That's why I don't miss the V6, because this engine, the way they, they put everything together was, it's just proper. I really like it. It behaved really well off-road. It was very composed. We tested the crawl control. We tested all the other off-road features. They were really nicely done. I really like that. But then we wanted to, Kind of after going over this hill over and over, I wanted to drive them on the road to see what we can kind of compare the different trims and different models. So we actually took a walk after everybody was done with all the trims and we were interested in the higher trim available at the time, which was the limited. Really like that automatic sidestep. Really like that interior with the big screen and the wood accents and whatnot. Then we went to the lowest trims. I wanted to compare the coil spring and the leaf spring. So on the road, the coil spring is significantly smoother, no bounciness. It is really a huge improvement. The leaf spring though, off-road, at least to me, it just felt more rugged, more truck-like, like old school. So I really like that they gave you both options. You can get the leaf spring in the lower trims or you can op option it up to a coil spring which is really smooth on road then we looked at this beautiful beautiful color Tacoma and then this happened with it oops sorry Toyota we may have broken the car a little bit but then we celebrated with some inner nine-year-old coming out I guess that's why we don't get nice things and got yelled at for sorry Let's go talk to Randy, who's the assistant chief engineer of the Tacoma. I have Randy over here from the Toyota Tacoma team. Randy, would you tell us what is what is your position with, to the Tacoma? Yeah, my name's Randy Badia, and I'm the assistant chief engineer on the new 2024 Tacoma. And so excited to be here with you guys today to, to review the track. Thank you so much. We're really excited about the Tacoma. I, I had a chance to drive one. It is it is really beautiful. I want to ask you something about the models we can't get yet. Yeah. Um, starting with the TRD Pro, the seat. Yeah. Tell us about the seat. What, how, how did that come about and kind of the backstory to, because yeah. we've never seen something like that on the Tacoma. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very exciting new product and first in the segment for us. Um, I was uh, driving in Japan a long time ago and there was a kinetic seat that uh, was a prototype from our advanced development team over in Japan. 
Um, we had driven that, and uh, our takeaway from that was, you know, a little iffy if we wanted to, to pursue it or not. But when we came back uh, to the state side, we talked with our engineering team, and we said, you know, uh, it's a good original concept, but where can we go from here? How can we take that and apply it to, to an off-road application? We think there's potential for some benefit in, uh, in for example, like TRD Pro. So we, we did an original proof of concept. Um, the team under COVID, actually, there was, uh, we weren't allowed back in the office at that time. So there was some barn engineering done, uh, some guys with some welders you know, at their home offices, and uh, came up with a proof of concept seat. We actually used off the shelf parts that were available. For example, mountain bike shocks were something we used in, in the original proof of concept seat. So with that seat, um, we did some trial runs um, and then kind of decided, yeah, there, there, there's some potential here. So we'd like to pursue this further. So it actually, what you see now in the truck looked nothing like that from what we drove in Japan and in our original proof of concept. So uh, there was a lot of steps to get it to where it is now, but that seat in particular is fantastic. Um, we've taken some objective data with that seat to show the eye stabilization with and without the seat on, um, and it really stabilizes your head and neck uh, during off-road driving situations, whether it's high-speed off-road or it's slow-speed rock crawling, it helps stabilize your body um, within the truck. Uh, there is a ball joint at the front of the seat cushion, and then there's a ball joint at the back, at the top of the seat back. And if you connect a line between those two ball joints, that's what we call the kinetic axis. So that seat has kind of a hammock motion, in addition to a vertical jounce that has a hammock motion. Uh, so there's four small shock absorbers in that seat. There's two on the lateral side and two on the vertical side, and then they're controlled by an air over oil system. Okay. So those shock absorbers control the, the lateral motion of the seat this way as a hammock, but also if you're going through the dunes or something, it also controls some of the vertical. It has about an inch of movement in, in any axis. That's um, cool. Yeah, and that's based on our, uh, our standard eight-way power seat. And we were able to keep all of the, the standard creature comforts from that eight-way power seat with the exception of power recline. So with all of the mechanisms in there that control the, the kinetic motion, um, we had to give up the power recline. So it does have yep. manual recline, but we still maintain heat, we still maintain ventilation, and still maintain all the other uh, power Lumbar support the as yeah. well. Yep, yeah, lumbar okay. support as well. That's so great. we maintained all of that. And it's designed on our, on our standard seat frame. So it can be plug and play into any of the Tacomas. Oh. Um, yeah, so it, it, it maintains our safety package and, and everything that has that standard uh, so, seat frame structure. So we may see it in other models as an option, maybe. Potentially. Potentially. So that yeah. works out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, right now, so, it's standard in the Pro in both your front uh, driver and passenger seats. But as you mentioned, you know, there's opportunity to, to bring that into like, other grades. I like that. That yeah. that might be something really nice to yeah. have. So how about the the Fox shocks? I, I read yeah. something about them being manually adjustable that's outside. Right. Is that That's something new on the, on the Tacoma. It is new, yeah. They have their QS3, QSC3 technology on those Fox shocks where it has three different uh, damping level settings. So each corner you have to adjust uh, setting one, two, or three uh, on all four corners, and that'll change the damping for a softer to firmer, depending on, on what kind of environment you're in. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, moving on to kind of the whole Tacoma as a whole, yeah. starting with the frame. Now, the frame is all boxed, and that is, I think, really nice. Sorry, I'm going to get into a little bit of a yeah. touchy subject there. Yeah. Uh, what was done different in this Tacoma to help with some of the rust issues or kind of prolonging the life of the frame that makes it a lot better? Yeah, great question. Than so, the as you one. know, uh, the outgoing model has the C channel frame, so you get a lot of exposure to the elements on, on there, and then it can also get trapped inside and so forth and some of the weld joints and everything. Um, the new frame, as you mentioned, is fully boxed. Uh, we use Taylor welded blanks on that frame, which is you can take two panels of different thicknesses and weld those together and then form them, and then we use a Tajima weld process that will, will weld those panels together. Um, and in doing that, you can get the strength where you need it without having to carry that uh, section property with that material all the way through the length of the frame so you're, you're penalized for all of that mass where you don't need it. So that's what that allows us to do on that side. Um, we've taken a lot of anti-corrosion countermeasures, sealed the thing up, make sure it's you know, impenetrable to the elements. Um, we have you know, wax going on it. We have the- Does have internal, yes. internal wax? Yeah, on, on certain portions of the frame, we have wax that goes on it, which is kind of a, it's not necessary to meet our standards, but it's kind of that above and beyond, just to make sure that we're getting it right this time. That's something, That's, you know, as a reflection that, 
that we want to make sure we've we've addressed. That's that's really good to hear. One other question, Randy, yeah. the transfer case. Yeah. So I'm going to briefly talk about the Thunders to give it use as a reference. So the transfer case, the actuator, is something that can be serviced separate in the Tundra without having to take the whole transfer case apart. Is that something in the Tacoma? I'm not, we use a different supplier um, than Tundra, but th that's something I'll have to get back to you if that actuator, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that that's something that Toyota does just for, for that um, purpose. Okay. So I would imagine that, that it's the same on Tacoma. Kind of moving from the transfer case into the transmission, I noticed that the, the manual transmission model makes a little bit less power than yeah. the automatic in the is it the core engine yeah the i force engine yeah. yep yes. why why is that yeah so as i was mentioning earlier um when we have our our specifications that we have to meet for the amount of drive force that goes through the drive line we can control a little bit of that uh initial wide open throttle uh first gear torque that goes through that drive line through software on the automatics Okay. On a manual transmission, we can't control your right foot, right? True. So if you were to spin the RPMs up and dump the clutch, for example, you know what, what's that going to do? Shock the drive line, prop shaft, rear diff, things like that. So we have to control the engine output a little bit more um, for that, that specific uh, specification that's on the manual transmissions. Just makes just sense. As, uh... Now, I love the fact that we have coil springs and leaf springs yeah. as you know, as you go through the trims, I think that is really cool. On the coil springs, are the frames completely different between like the coil spring model and the leaf spring model, or are they exactly the same? Yeah, so that was one thing, you know, we decided when we brought the uh, the new multi-link rear suspension in, is some customers said, hey, I, ju I just want a basic truck. I don't need all of this. I just want a basic truck. So a leaf spring is just fine for me. So we looked at how are we gonna accomplish that you know, with efficiency in our design department. Um, we ended up going with an underslung leaf this time. The outgoing model has an overslung leaf. So the underslung leaf is kind of a throwback to the old Land Cruisers that had the same thing, right? Or if you're familiar with underslung. Um, in doing that, we're able to keep a lot of the frame common. So uh, the only thing different is really the rear hangers on that frame. Everything else is, is common on that frame. Even the front attachments for that leaf spring is the same attachment we use for the front trailing arm okay. on the multi-link. So yeah, there's 99% of the frame is, is... Some of my viewers will love to ask this, can we swap it? Can you swap from the leaf to the coil? Yes. Yeah, the spring seats for the coil spring that sit on the inner side of the frame, you'd have to grab those and weld them on yourself. Okay. You know, obviously. Okay. Other, other than that, yeah. we can we can make it happen somehow. I'm sure you could. <laughs> there, well, there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, yeah tr very true. Question, and something that is a little bit of an elephant in the room and something that really comes up. Yeah. So on the off-road models, you have completely different fascia and completely different models. Uh, bumpers, but on more of the lower trims, or I think even the limited, there is a very large dam at the bottom yeah. that kind of <laughs> makes the ground clearance very, very yeah. low. Yeah. What was the purpose of that? Yeah, that air dam is really uh, what we call it internally the air dam, and it's really to get the airflow around the vehicle instead of underneath it where it becomes turbulent, creates a lot of drag. So that gets the airflow around the vehicle, and that improves our, our uh, aerodynamics in order to improve, again, our fuel efficiency and emissions. So it's required on a lot of the models to achieve that, but we were able to remove it on kind of the off-road models. So our off-road uh, iForce doesn't have it. Um, unfortunately, the, the hybrid off-road does still have it, uh, but then our Pro Trail Hunter don't have it. So that helps also improve our, our approach angles and so forth. But we did consider that in design, the, <laughs> the kind of unfortunateness, if you will, of having that on there. So we designed it that with one tool, you can take off uh, that air dam. That was initially, and I looked at the truck, that was my hunch, because I was looking at it, it was like, this yeah. is almost like design. You can remove it if you want to, but yeah, it's Yeah, it's held on, you know, by I think nine attachments, and it was designed all with the same attachments. Um, so if it does get damaged or anything like that, it's, it's easily replaced. Knowing Tacoma owners, and I deal with a lot of them, you deal with a lot of them, if you were to remove that, is that that is not a structural piece that is purely for like aerodynamic purposes. If you were to remove it, we wouldn't compromise the kind of integrity of the bumper or the front. Correct. No, it, there's no structural element to it. Um, but of course, we don't condone removing it. That does contribute to the fuel economy yeah. and emissions um, that the, the truck achieves. But yes, it, there's no structural element to it. Okay. And Randy, I will ask you one thing. You've worked on a Tacoma now for a very long time. 
What makes you the most proud of it? What is your favorite thing about the Tacoma developing and, and kind of going through it? Yeah, I think the powertrain is one of our biggest accomplishments, right? You know, coming out of the V6 uh, from the outgoing model Tacoma, um, there were a lot of complaints on where that torque was created within the power band and also kind of the drivability concerns with it, kind of hunting for gear. So that was one thing we wanted to address for our customers in the new Tacoma. Um, and our team did a bang up job with that. Uh, the new 2.4 liter turbo um, actually uh, it's about 54% common with uh, the 2.4 liter turbo that's in our other passenger car vehicles and, and so forth like the Highlander. Um, but everything else on that engine is unique. So that was designed with um, dependability and quality in mind uh, and re reliability. So some people will ask questions, how do you get the reliability that you had with the V6 out of a 2.4, a small displacement turbo? Um, and that was one of the things for our, our uh, specifications for that engine in this truck, um, we took it more to the commercial uh, vehicle specifications as opposed to the passenger side specifications because we know that the customers are going to be using this truck lugging up and down hills, um, towing with it, putting it through a heavy duty cycle. Um, as well as that, uh, we have the cooling system uses about a three inch water, or yeah, excuse me, a three inch water inlet pipe in order to keep it as cool as possible. And it also has uh, improved oil circulation system as well in order to keep everything well lubricated while you're off roading or towing. Um, actually, on our bench test, when we put it through the durability cycles, that bench is uh, tiltable. So we'll tilt that engine, you know, left, right, forward, aft, uh, just to make sure that everything is maintaining its lubrication and we're still running it at full speed and doing all of that um, at those different angles. So um, really a proven powertrain, really excited about the powertrain, the amount of power it puts out, and it puts out that torque at about 1,700 RPMs, as you saw. So, And it'll hold that torque all the way up into the, you know, 4,200, 4,300 RPMs. So, Really I, I don't so miss the V6 right. for the Tacoma. Yeah, I said exactly. This, I said this when we reviewed it, but yeah. I don't. Yeah. And what about the eight-speed? So it's a direct shift eight-speed that was yeah, kind it's, of. It's our global 8AT transmission that you've seen in in other uh, models, but on the the iForce Max, it uses a 48 horsepower uh, electric motor that sits between the engine and the transmission that really gives you that 465 pound-feet of torque. So. And there's still a torque converter behind it. That's my understanding. Yeah. Okay. So that's my understanding. So I can. I can confirm that for you, though. That's good. I, yeah. I love that. I'm extremely proud of, of this truck. Um, the team did such a great job. We have, you know, the best team, I believe, in the industry uh, working on our products, and uh, the truck team is, is an exceptional team. For me, I think the Trail Hunter, um, I was part of the original concept planning team, and the Trail Hunter was really kind of our concept from the beginning. Uh, we have the Pro, which we say go fast, and then we decided to make the Trail Hunter, which we say go far. So that's something that has all the accessories on it. We wanted to create a credible foundation for the customer to build their overlanding rig. So okay. we built it from the, the ground up, the customer can take it, and they can build it from the top down, putting the accessories and racks very and so true. forth on it. That, so, that um, is a very cool yeah. idea, actually. Yeah, it's got uh, you know our partnership with ARB on there, but in addition, we've got uh, associated accessory products at the dealerships that the customer can then go purchase um, at the dealer directly from those, those accessory companies. I love Network. that because people are going to do it anyways. Might That's as well right. make it official. That's right. Randy? Yeah. You're the best, man. You guys well, did a really you. good job on the Tacoma. Thank you. And thank you so much from all our viewers yeah, and thank you. you personally. Thank you so much yeah, for your happy time. To be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So here's my takeaway from the video. I still like the Tacoma. I think I actually like it more than the new Tundra because I feel like they did things better and the biggest thing is we actually got to drive a very very base model that was not a pre-production prototype it was actually a production model and it had the standard engine not the core engine it was still impressive it still didn't feel underpowered it still felt pretty nice it didn't feel like super basic and it has plenty of amenities but it was nice to drive it still looked good usually you know when they advertise a model they put their nicest one and then you go by the base model it's just like this doesn't even look like the same car actually it did i was pretty impressed i still like the tacoma and now we have confirmation that that hideous thing in the front that we all don't like can be removable and just like we guessed from the beginning and it doesn't affect the function of the bumper you can remove it if you don't like it and life is wonderful. Now, we are still waiting to get our hands on a hybrid model or a TRD Pro or 
hopefully the trail hunter one day. So we will talk about that when that comes. We talked about it briefly about the hybrid system. It's pretty similar to the Tundra, but once we get our hands in one, we're also going to review it and go from there. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.